You've probably had loaded potatoes before, but have you had loaded cauliflower? Yes, this is a thing, and it's a thing you are going to want to try. Hi everyone, it's Maya from wholesomeyum.com, and I make easy, healthy recipes with 10 ingredients or less. So today, I'm showing you how to make a loaded cauliflower casserole. This dish has all the comfort food flavors of loaded potatoes, but we sneak a veggie in there. And it's going to please even the pickiest eaters. My kids love it, and they're only five and seven. Without the cheese, the bacon, the sour cream, this does not feel like health food. This is just comfort food. Let's do this. I'm starting by chopping a large head of cauliflower into florets. This would also be delicious with broccoli. I've got a chicken bacon ranch casserole with broccoli that you can make as well if you love broccoli. So I've cut the cauliflower in half and then I'm going to turn it and cut it in half again into quarters just like this. Then use your knife to cut away the core. You'll end up with some pretty large pieces here so go ahead and cut those into smaller florets so that they are all the same size that way they will cook evenly. And if you have any larger core pieces go ahead and get rid of those. Sometimes the cauliflower will come apart really easily so in that case you can just break it up with your fingers too. Go ahead and transfer all the cauliflower florets into a large bowl. Next, I'm going to melt two tablespoons of butter. I don't normally use butter for roasting cauliflower or roasting anything really, but because we'll be roasting it in the small baking dish to save on dishes, I think it's going to be fine. You can also use olive oil or avocado oil if you prefer. So just drizzle that over the cauliflower. And now we can season with salt and pepper to taste. I don't have a specific amount here, just add a light amount, not too much salt because we will have extra salt in the sauce as well. Now I'm just going to stir this together to make sure that everything is mixed evenly and then I'm going to transfer this to a small baking dish. This is what I'm going to use to actually make the casserole and to save on dishes, I'm going to roast the cauliflower in there as well. If you prefer, you can also roast the cauliflower on a sheet pan which will actually go faster. Roast the cauliflower at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, 25 to 30 minutes in the baking dish, stirring halfway through, or 15 to 20 minutes if using a sheet pan. While the cauliflower was roasting, I'm going to prepare my other ingredients and the sauce. So I'll start with some green onions here. I'll need a quarter cup, which is going to be about two or three, and I like to use just the green parts, though you can include the white if you prefer. Once you've chopped up what looks like the right amount, I like to measure it just to confirm, but feel free to eyeball it too. You'll need two cloves of minced garlic, and you can use the jarred stuff for convenience if you like, which is going to be about one teaspoon, but I like to use fresh for the best flavor. So here's my trick to peel it easily. Cut off the root first, and then bang with your knife just like this until the skin looks like it's loose, and then it'll come right off. Super easy. Now I'm just going to slice the garlic as thinly as I can and then use a rocking motion back and forth using your other hand for leverage to mince it. We'll move that out of the way for now and it's time for what I think is the best part of this loaded cauliflower casserole. We're going to make the creamy sauce. So I'm adding two thirds of a cup of sour cream here and I'm actually using the same bowl that I used for the cauliflower. No use dirtying up extra dishes. You can easily just wipe it down and use the same one. And I'm going to add a quarter cup of heavy cream. You can also substitute other types of milk here, whatever fits your lifestyle, but the heavy cream gives the richest flavor and the thickest sauce, so I highly recommend it. Give that a whisk until smooth, and then we are going to add shredded cheddar cheese, though you can use other types of cheese here if you like. I have a cup and a half of cheddar, and I'm using about half of that for the sauce at this step. And now I'm going to add half of those green onions. So I had a quarter cup, I'm adding about half of that measuring cup, which is about two tablespoons. And here I have six tablespoons of chopped bacon, or you can also use store-bought bacon bits as a shortcut, but I think fresh really tastes best. So I'm adding half of that as well, which is about three tablespoons. And just go ahead and stir that all together. I'm gonna season this lightly with salt and pepper, but keep in mind that it will get more salty as the cheese melts later on. So we don't wanna add too much salt and pepper at this step. Oops, I actually forgot the garlic. That is pretty important. That was supposed to go in before the salt and pepper, but it doesn't actually matter, so I'm just gonna add it now. When the cauliflower is done, poke it with a fork to make sure that it's nice and tender. And do leave the oven on at 450 because you are going to be baking this for a short time again. For now, I'm going to transfer the cauliflower into the bowl with the sauce. Be careful, it is going to be steaming hot. Stir the cauliflower together with the sauce and be sure you're gentle so that it doesn't get mushy. 
Time to transfer this back into the casserole dish, but don't worry, this is going to go super quick. Look at all that cheesy goodness already. The last step is the topping. So I'm going to add the remaining shredded cheddar cheese over the loaded cauliflower casserole, and then I'm going to add the remaining bacon bits as well. You'll only need to bake the casserole for another five to 10 minutes, just long enough to melt the cheese. After you take your loaded cauliflower casserole out of the oven, there's one last step, a sprinkle of the remaining green onions. So you can also sprinkle these on before baking if you prefer, but I like to keep them a little crisp so I add them afterward. Totally up to you. Okay, time for a taste test. This is going to be so good. Just perfect. Cheesy, bacony, tastes like loaded potatoes, but without the actual starch of the potato. And the cauliflower flavor doesn't come out strong at all. This makes a delicious side dish for the holidays, for weeknight dinners, or if I'm being honest, I meal prep this for lunch all the time. Seriously, you cannot go wrong with it. Let me know what you think if you make it. I always love hearing what you guys think. And if you like using cauliflower as comfort food like I do, watch my video here for the right way to make the creamiest mashed cauliflower.